Hi, this is Lee Ellis with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. Well, this is an exciting week for us because our new book, Leadership Behavior DNA, Discovering Natural Talents and Managing Differences, hit the street. Its national release is this week. So that's a lot of excitement, a lot of work, a lot of excitement. But I wanted to share a little bit from that today. You know, I was thinking about uh, what happened to me just before Christmas. I was working with a team that had really healthy leadership, really good leadership that saw the value in developing their people. They brought me in to work with them. Now, they had already gone through our leadership behavior DNA assessment, which this book is based around. And so we were able to dig in in the workshop and look at individual traits and look at differences. We looked at talents, we looked at strengths and struggles. And it was really amazing to see this team. I was working with a, a really large group, about 40 people, the whole team. But as we divided up, uh, it was obvious that we put them in separate traits and uh, by groups. We call it the amazing traits exercise. And so each group has about 15 or 20 minutes to prepare and they share three of their strengths and three of their struggles. Now this is fascinating because you see in the flesh differences that are so obvious. When you have uh, people who are very outgoing and people reserved, or people who are very patient and people who are very impatient, and they're sharing their strengths and struggles, you see how different they really are. And especially as they talk about their struggles because it's usually the struggles that irritate us most about other people, especially those who are opposite. So this chapter 23 I mentioned talks about team dynamics and how natural talents predict team dynamics. So here we had this team with all sorts of different natural talents. Now it was predominantly millennials, a few older leaders, but predominantly millennials. They were eager to learn. They had a good attitude. And as we shared together in this way, they were very vulnerable and it was such a powerful experience for them. I've done this exercise many, many times, but I always come away so encouraged. Well, that afternoon, uh, later that afternoon, many of them came to me and said, what a great experience it was. And then I got to go to their Christmas party that night and the same thing. There were individually people were coming up and telling me how much they had learned and how powerful it was because they worked with this person and they saw them this way, but now they saw them in a more complete way not just their struggles, but they realized that strengths and struggles went together. We call that the two sides of the same coin. And so what we were learning that day to have a better team is instead of focusing on one of your teammates' struggles, stuff that irritates you, focus on their strengths because you're not going to change their struggles and they probably can't change them much either. They might be able to adapt a little bit. Well, our goal is cohesive teams. And when you think about these natural talents that are different, uh, it's really uh, comes to comes to play and comes to vision. Now they had their team report, which graphically showed how some people were on the left side in a trait and some people were on the opposite side. So, seeing those differences graphically in their team report and then looking at those people and then talking through about the strengths and struggles of those different traits. It was just a powerful experience and a fun experience. They had a lot of fun with that that day. So that told me that they had a lot of trust already, but now there were a lot of that skepticism they might have had about the others kind of got washed away as they came to see them in a whole more whole way. And as they saw them being vulnerable about who they were and about their strengths and their struggles. So it was a, it was just a great event and I enjoyed it so much and appreciated them. And I think they grew their trust among that team, the maturity of them of being more self-aware and more others aware was such a powerful experience. So it was just a real, uh, it was really a gift for me. I really enjoyed seeing it. I came away energized and I think they did too. And that was kind of like, I was able to give them the gift that keeps on giving. And they gave me a gift in return of, uh, my whole mission in life is based around freeing the captives and bringing freedom to the captives. And I felt like they got a lot of freedom that day and that brought me a lot of joy. 
You know, in World War II, after World War II, a British general named S.L.A. Marshall did a lot of research on why some organizations, some units were better, more effective in combat than others. And what he learned was you didn't have to wipe out everybody in a unit to make them combat ineffective. You could wipe out a few, a few critical people, and they became ineffective. They lost their cohesion. And that was the key he came up with. Cohesion is so important for a team. But when you have differences, differences tend to push you away from cohesion. But when you recognize those differences and manage them appropriately and work with them appropriately, you, it really eliminates all the static that breaks down your cohesion. So I encourage you, get a copy of the book, take a look at it, and learn and help your people develop so you can have a more cohesive team as you manage differences and natural talent.